Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Hello viewers, hope you are all doing fine. Happy to be back with another video. This video is on centrifugal pump affinity loss and how to resize the pump using affinity loss. In this video course, you will learn what are the affinity laws, what are the machine and process parameters of centrifugal pump, how are the relationship represented graphically, and what example to illustrate the use of affinity laws to resize the pump impeller. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce more knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. The three important sizing and performance parameters of centrifugal pump are flow, head and power. These parameters depend on the pump's design parameters such as impeller diameter, impeller width, speed of rotation, blade angle, etc. For a given impeller design, the machine and operating variables that can be used to change the pump performance are impeller diameter D, impeller speed, RPM. This figure illustrates the graphical representation of the head versus capacity relationship at various impeller diameter that can be fitted in a given pump casing and rotational speed of the impeller. Note, in the same casing, you can accommodate three impeller size, impeller 8 inches, 7 inches and 6 inches. And depending on the impeller size, the flow and head as well as the BHP will vary. Also shown in the figure 3 is the pump performance at three different speeds, N1, N2 and N3. As the speed increases, the head and the flow increases. Affinity laws are applicable to incompressible fluids. The affinity laws are also called fan laws because they are applied to fans which are used for low pressure applications where the density changes are negligible. The affinity laws are mathematical expressions that define changes in pump capacity, head and BHP when a change is made to the pump speed, impeller diameter or both. According to affinity laws, capacity Q changes in direct proportion to impeller diameter ratio or to speed ratio for a given pump casing. Q2 is equal to Q1 times D2 by D1 and Q2 is equal to Q1 times N2 by N1. Head H changes in direct proportion to the square of the impeller diameter ratio or the square of the speed ratio as shown below. H2 equal to H1 times D2 by D1 squared and H2 equal to H1 times N2 by N1 squared. BHP changes in direct proportion to the cube of the impeller diameter ratio or the cube of the speed ratio as shown below. BHP2 equal to BHP1 times D2 by D1 to the power 3 and BHP2 equal to BHP1 times N2 by N1 to the power 3. If changes are made to both impeller diameter and pump speed, the equation can be combined to give Q2 equal to Q1 times D2 into N2 divided by D1 into N1. In 
In the same way, you write for h h and b h p, h two equal to h one times d two by n two divided by d one by n one squared. B h t two equal to b h p one times d two into d n two divided by d one into n one to the power three. When the performance in terms of q one H1 and BHP1 are known at some particular speed n1 and impeller diameter d1. The affinity loss can be used to estimate performance Q2, H2, and BHP2 at some other speed n2 and diameter d2. The efficiency remains nearly constant for speed changes and for small changes in diameter. The affinity law can be used to resize the existing pump to reduce power consumption in case the user feels that the pump is oversized for the current duty point. Another use of the affinity law is to resize the pump for another duty point at higher capacity by replacing the impeller within the same pump casing. Let me now walk you through. A real-world example to make you understand the concept better. In this example, you will see how to resize an existing pump and realize the energy saving. A petrochemical plant has installed a centrifugal pump for supplying chilled water from the chilled water system to two of its coolers. The pump has an installed capacity. At a total head of 80 meters, there are two coolers in the process plant that consume chilled water. Cooler A consumes at 50 meter head, and cooler B consumes at a head of 60 meters. When the existing pumps meet the process requirement, the pump design has been done based on the maximum head required by the cooler B. The cooler A needs a head of only 50 meters, whereas it receives the chilled water at a head of 70 meters. The excess head being lost across the control valve. The process engineering team feels the pump is oversized and it is concerned with the power consumption by the pump. What modification proposal should the process engineer recommend to the plant? To reduce the power consumption, before we move on, I would like to make a call to my dear viewers. Your Spec Elearn channel is one-stop learning and skill development destination for your career needs. Get instant access to useful career-oriented subjects and become knowledgeable and competent. So do not forget to subscribe. Please press the subscribe button. Now, the existing chilled water distribution network is illustrated in this figure. Pump A and B are designed for delivering 625 meter cube per hour at a head of 70 meter, as shown. Cooler A needs 550 cubic meter per hour at 50 meter head, and cooler B needs 75 cubic meter per hour at 60 meter head. To perform the cooling duties, the power required for the existing scheme, capacity Q, six twenty-five cubic meter per hour. The head developed, H, is seventy meters. The density. Of the liquid is thousand kg per cubic meter. Efficiency of the pump is point seven. Power required P is obtained from the equation given below. P equals point zero zero nine eight one times Q times H T times rho divided by three thousand six hundred times efficiency. Substituting the figures, we get P equal to One seventy point three one kilowatt.
The proposed scheme is shown in this figure. It is recommended to split the chilled water network into two different headers, one operating at 50 meter head and the other operating at 60 meter head as shown. According to the scheme, pump A will operate at 550 meter cube per hour and 50 meter head and pump B will deliver 75 meter cube per hour at 60 meter head. The proposed scheme details for pump A are capacity Q 550 cubic meter power head developed H equal to 50 meter. Power required P for pump A is obtained as below P equal to 0 0.009812 times Q times HT times rho divided by 3600 into efficiency. Substituting the data for pump A, you get P equal to 107 kilowatt. Proposed scheme details for pump B, capacity Q equal to 75 cubic meter per hour, head developed H is 60 meters. Power required P for pump B is obtained as below P equal to 0 0.00981 times 75 times 60 times 1000 divided by 3600 times 0 0.7 which works out to 17.5 kilowatt. So total power required for pump A and B together is P equal to 107 plus 17.5 equal to 124.5 kilowatt. The power saved is 170.31 minus 124.5 which works out to 45.81 kilowatts. Assuming power cost of 0 0.033 US dollar per kilowatt hour, the estimated annualized saving for 330 working days in a year will be 45.81 times 24 times 330 times 0.033 which works out to 11,973 US dollars. Thus there is an opportunity for substantial saving in power in the proposed scheme. How will you implement the scheme? What will be the methodology? Implementation methodology Pump A It is recommended to trim the impeller diameter of the existing impeller. Applying the affinity loss given above, we get Q2 is equal to Q1 times D2 by D1. and H2 equal to H1 times D2 by D1 squared. So the ratio of D2 to D1 equal to Q2 by Q1 which is equal to 550 by 625 which works out to 0.88. Substituting the value of the ratio D2 by D1 in the head relationship we get H2 by H1 equal to 0.88 squared. So H2 becomes H1 times 0.88 squared, which works out to 54.28 meters. Thus, by trimming the impeller diameter by 12%, the flow can be reduced to 550 cubic meter per hour and the head reduced to 55 meter, which will meet the process requirement. Implementation methodology for pump B. It is recommended to install a new pump with a capacity of 75 cubic meter per hour and 60 meter head for supplying chilled water to the cooler B. 
This requires an additional investment. Due to the attractive energy saving potential of the proposal, the investment is likely to be recovered in less than 18 months. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.